you might be tempted to sort of expand everything and cancel. You can do that, but if you can factor, always better to factor. So let me factor out the 2x, got to be really careful here now, and factor out one of these terms, x squared minus 1. And what, do I, what am I left with? Well, here I've taken one of those away, but I had two to begin with, so I have one left over. So I have x squared minus 1. And then I pull that out, but I have a negative sign there, so let me put a negative sign in front of that. So there's the negative sign, there's the 2x, and these two together give me the, this thing squared. Then plus, and then what do I have here? Well, I take this out, I take that out, leaves me with this term, so I see 2 times x squared plus 1. So I simplified that actually a good deal. And you'll notice that, in fact, I can actually cancel this factor with one of those. So I can cancel this factor with one of these, which leaves me with a power of 3 on the bottom now. OK, and so now where am I? Well, let me now untangle this a little bit. Sometimes these problems are algebraically intensive, but of course they're worth doing carefully. Here, when I distribute that negative sign, be careful, that negative sign's got to hit everybody here. I see a minus x squared and then plus 2x squared, so that gives me a net gain of just x squared. And then I have a minus and a minus is a plus 1. And then here I have a 2 times 1, which is a plus 2, so plus 2 plus 1 is plus 3. So after all the simplification, I get, and I hope that you got too, this for the second derivative. Wow. OK, but now we're in a position to do all the work we need to do. First of all, when does this thing equal 0? Well, this thing equals 0 when the top is 0. And when is the top 0? Well, either x is 0 or this is 0. But notice that x squared plus 3 is never 0 because squared is always non-negative. So in fact, the only solution we get, so if we set equal to 0, we have that x equals 0. The other place we have to look is where the second derivative is undefined. Second derivative is undefined where the bottom is 0, and so we see that could happen at either plus or minus 1, possibly a place of contention. But remember, we've already seen that th those represent vertical asymptotes. So we don't need to worry about them as points of inflection. OK, well, now let's make a little sign number sign chart here for the second derivative. And I'm going to put in 0, but remember we also put in our asymptotes, which we saw to be minus 1 and 1. Let me remind you, these are vertical asymptotes, so you don't want to cross them. You don't want to cross vertical asymptotes. They are very mean. All right, now what do we do? Well, now what I'm going to do is take values and plug in and see what we get, positive or negative, determine conca concave up or concave down. Pick a point to the left here, like negative 2. If I plug in negative 2, what do I see? Well, that is always positive, no matter what, because x squared plus 3 is positive. So that's always positive. Negative 2 makes this negative, so the whole top here is negative. If I put a negative 2 in here, that makes a plus 4. Minus 1 is 3. 3 cubed is positive. So I've got a positive on the bottom. I've got a negative on the top. Net gain is negative. So this thing is falling. And then what happens between minus 1 and 0? We've got to pick a point in between there. So you might want to pick like minus a half. Let's try minus a half and see what happens. Again, this is always positive. The minus a half makes this negative here. If I put a minus a half in here, when I square it, I get plus a fourth. Plus a fourth minus 1 is actually minus 3 fourths. And minus 3 fourths cubed is negative. So I've got a negative on the bottom and a negative on the top. This actually becomes positive. And what about at 1 half? Well, if we try 1 half and plug it in, I get a positive here, a positive here. When I put in a 1 half here, I see a 1 half squared is a fourth minus 1 is minus 3 halves. Again, negative. And so I have a negative here, but a positive here. So this is a net gain of negative. And if I put something really big in here, like let's say 10, positive, positive. And if I take 10 squared and subtract 1, that's positive. So in fact, I see this is positive. So what have we learned? I've learned that this function is concave down up to the asymptote, then concave up to the point at 0, then it's concave down. So 0 really is a point of inflection. And then past this asymptote, we're concave up again. OK, so now we have all the information to graph this final function. So let's take a look at how we put all this information together. OK, so what do we have? Well, let me draw some axes in black. 
sort of men in black, it's axes in black. Okay, very pretty. Now, where are we going to mark? Well, let's mark our let's mark our asymptotes. We have a vertical one at minus one. So minus one, we have a vertical asymptote. We can't cross that line no matter what. We have one at one. Can't cross that line no matter what. We have a horizontal asymptote actually at y equals 0, which is the x-axis. I'll just draw it a little bit up so you can see it. But remember, it's actually on the x-axis. OK, so there are all the asymptotes, which you notice cut our world up into a whole bunch of pieces. And we can't cross these lines. So we may exist here, we may exist here, we may exist here, but we're not going to cross them over. OK, well, let's see what we've learned. Try to bring all this information back for us quickly so we can see. We see that, in fact, we're always decreasing. So the function always is going to be going down. So what that tells me is that I'm going to be dropping here, I'm going to be dropping here, and I'm going to be dropping here. But I have to be within these asymptotes. So somehow here, I can't go way up and drop down because I have to be asymptotic here. So I must have somehow just stick up there and then come down like that and be asymptotic here. And in fact, that's consistent with what we've already discovered because I've seen that we're concave down up to negative 1. So therefore, we're concave down. We're decreasing. There's only one way to go. It must be like this. Notice that is decreasing. It's concave down. I'm asymptotic here, and I'm asymptotic here. OK, what about in this region? Well, what do I know? I'm still going down. But at x equals 0, I know that, in fact, I have a point of inflection. And we've already seen that here I'm concave up, and here I'm going to be concave down. So how must that go? Well, I must be asymptotic, decreasing, and concave up. Only one way to go, like that. Now I'm still going to decrease, asymptotic to here, but concave down. And so therefore, we must have that little nice pretty bend in there. Now we come to this region. What do we know? We know the function is still decreasing, so we're still going to go down. We can't be going down like this because I've got to be asymptotic here. So I must be way up here. And if you notice back there, we see that we are still concave up in this region. So I'm concave up and asymptotic and decreasing. All, all the conditions are fulfilled. And this actually is a very accurate sketch of the function f of x. And notice how we saw that nice kink and this nice little bend of curvature here. And we see exactly where that curvature happens. Changes right here. So there's the graph of the function. I really invite you to try these on your own. This is the only way to really nail these things. And I know full well, I'm not an idiot, I know full well this is a multi, multi step process. It's easy to get tired, it's easy to get frustrated, and especially if you get conflicting information, which means you've made a mistake somewhere. Just take it really slowly. A lot of times, everyone has to do these things again and again to get them right. Practice them, make this, these ideas your own, and you've really done something big. In fact, let me just close by saying that we've really come a long way, and in fact, we've completely resolved the differential side of calculus. We've looked at derivatives, we've built them up, we've seen how to find them, we've seen the power of these things. Now we're ready to finally move on to that very second question of calculus that I mentioned in our very first discussion. We're now going to look at completely different realm, look at areas, look at shapes, try to figure out how to put those things together. Congratulations, and I'll see you at our next section. Bye.